Good. You got any grease for me today? Oh, I've always got grease. Uh, I don't know, I've got like 40 gallons or so, so it's all yours. I don't want it. Take it away. I'll take it. So this is the process in a nutshell. Um, that's the, the waste grease, and the waste grease after it gets processed uh, turns into this. Turns into biodiesel, uh, which is on the top layer, and then the glycerin is the bottom layer, that's the darker layer. And that looks so, like nice vinaigrette. Yeah, it, it does look like a salad dressing. Um, and this glycerin we purify and use in all our products, and the soaps and the lotion and the, the shampoos and the shower gels that we're developing. And then this stuff on the top is the biodiesel, which goes right into our car, and uh, we drive on that. Where are we going now? Okay, we're gonna go back to the uh, methanol recovery system. It looks a little bit like we're building an atomic bomb back here. We make about 120 gallons of biodiesel a month, so we have to pick up about 120 gallons of vegetable oil. A month? A month. Or there's about 20% glycerin from that, so maybe about 40 ga uh, 30 gallons, 40 gallons of glycerin that, the win that we then use for the products. He was making the biodiesel for his car at our house, and the glycerin was just pack piling up. In I'm not that much of a neat freak, but it was just crazy. So I asked him, what are you going to do with it? You know, can you get rid of it? And instead of just getting rid of it, he decided to investigate, which is very martial, things that you can make with glycerin. We always wanted to have our own thing that we did together. And the more he did stuff with the soap, the more he just sort of started connecting the dots. Like, well, I'm getting this grease from restaurants and I'm making soap. Wouldn't it be cool if the restaurants used the soap and we used the grease in the car? And I mean, not a normal person would just kind of come up with this, but not, uh, I mean, you're not normal, but <laughs> very smart. Know, I grew up in Connecticut, so my parents were kind of do-it-yourselfers, and we had a coal stove and chickens and all that sort of stuff, so I was always kind of trying to be self-sufficient. I like that about biodiesel, too, because you can make your own fuel. You don't need to go to the corner gas station. I have a satisfaction with the whole shredding of the magazines before I put them in the packaging. Um, not to say I don't love those magazines, I still do work with Vogue frequently, but I do like shredding them. <laughs> and you're recycling? I'm recycling, it's a safe way to ship it, and you know, people that we send it to appreciate that we're not filling it with peanuts, we're not filling it with something that, you know, is just waste. What does this mean for, for you as a parent or a young child? We don't go to gas stations. We help restaurants get rid of their grease. You know, it's sort of, there's a bigger world outside of us, and he's already learning that at age three, that, you know, he sees me shipping out soap. He sees Marshall making biodiesel, and, you know, I think not a lot of three-year-olds can kind of get that world view quite so early, but um, we're trying just to have him look a little bit outside of his bubble. Hey, Wyatt, what goes into mom and dad's car? I'm